Hit the subscribe button if you don't want me to come at night. Have you ever wondered about the echoes of laughter and cries that reverberate through an empty nursery room? Picture this. A charming old house nestled in a sleepy town, draped with an air of tranquility and seeming like the perfect place to start anew. That's what it seemed like to me when I first set foot in it. But, as is often the case, appearances can be misleading. In this unassuming house there was one room that stood out like a sore thumb against the otherwise endearing charm of the place. A nursery left untouched and frozen in time by the previous owners, as if they'd left in a hurry leaving behind a piece of their lives. And it wasn't just any nursery. It was one that held an inexplicable aura of intrigue and dread. The room was filled with antiquated toys, each with its own tale of forgotten childhoods, dolls with vacant eyes that seemed to follow you around the room, a rocking horse that creaked under an unseen weight, and a faded teddy bear that seemed to bear the brunt of years of untold stories. The wallpaper, once vibrant and filled with joyous motifs, now bore a faded, ghostly appearance, its pastel colors dulled by time. Walking into this room, you could feel a chill run down your spine, the air heavy with a sense of foreboding. It was as if the room itself held its breath, waiting, watching. There was an eerie silence, a stillness that seemed to hum with anticipation. The room was empty, yes, but it was far from silent. You could almost hear the echoes of a time long past, whispers of laughter and cries that sent shivers down your spine. As the day went on, the nursery room remained a mystery, a peculiar anomaly in an otherwise perfect house. It was unsettling, yes, but it was during the day, and the sunlight streaming through the windows lent a semblance of normality to the room. But as the day dwindled and the shadows grew longer, a sense of unease began to creep in. But as night fell, the nursery room took on a life of its own, when darkness engulfs the world, some rooms start to whisper their secrets. That first night in the house, as the moon stood guard in the inky sky, the whispers began. They seeped through the old wooden floorboards, drifted up the grand staircase, and into the quiet corners of my mind. From the nursery they came, a room that had been silent all day, now alive with the echoing sounds of laughter, soft and gentle like the tinkling of a wind chime caught in a summer breeze. But then those laughs would morph into cries, wails that sounded too human, too raw to be dismissed as mere creaks of the old house. Curiosity peaked and a bit unsettled, I found myself drawn towards the nursery. The door creaked open to reveal a room bathed in moonlight, empty but for the echoes of laughter and cries that continued to bounce off the pastel-colored walls. No toys moved, no shadows danced, just an empty room with sounds that had no source. Night after night, the pattern repeated, laughter, then cries. Each night, the sounds seemed to grow in intensity, like a story being told, a narrative unfolding. The laughter became wilder, the cries more desperate. Despite the absence of visual evidence, I could feel a presence in the nursery, a lingering essence that seemed to vibrate with every creak and moan of the old house. Each investigation yielded the same result, an empty room, a feeling of being watched, and those disturbing nightly echoes. I could feel the house breathing around me, its heartbeat sinking with the laughter and cries from the nursery. The laughter hinted at joy long lost, the cries spoke of a sorrow that had seeped into the very walls of the house. As the nights passed, I realized that the echoes weren't just sounds, they were whispers of a past, a tragic tale that the nursery was desperate to share. The laughter, the cries, they were not just echoes, they were voices. Voices that belonged to the unseen, to those who had once filled the nursery with life, laughter, and tears. I knew then, I was not alone in this house. Do spirits of the past seek companionship in the living? I pondered this question as the eerie occurrences in the nursery escalated. The once neatly arranged toys were now found scattered across the room as if a child had been at play. There was a sense of purpose to the disarray, as though someone or something was reliving cherished memories. The rocking chair, which had sat untouched in the corner, began to move as if propelled by an unseen force. It would rock back and forth, its creaking rhythm echoing through the silence of the house. There was an uncanny rhythm to it, a rhythm that seemed to mimic the lullabies of a bygone era. As these events unfolded, an icy chill began to permeate the room, 
It was as if the very air was infused with the essence of the unseen playmate. It was a presence that seemed to watch from the shadows, observing with an insatiable curiosity. The room, once a sanctuary of childhood innocence, had become the playground of an unseen entity. A sense of dread began to fill me. It was a dread that went beyond the fear of the unknown. It was a dread that comes when one realizes that they are not alone in their solitude. Yet despite the fear there was a part of me that was drawn to the mystery, a part of me that yearned to understand the history that was unfolding before my very eyes. And so I decided to delve into the past of the house. I needed to uncover the story that was hidden within its walls. I was determined to reveal the identity of the unseen playmate. I hoped that understanding the past would shed light on the present, and perhaps, offer a glimpse into the future. The past, it seems, is not always buried. As I embarked on this journey into history, I realized that the past has a way of making itself known. And in the case of the unseen playmate, it was a past that refused to be forgotten. What tragedies might a house's walls conceal? A question that hung heavy in the air as the echoes of laughter and cries reverberated through the hollow chambers of the house. A question that held a chilling answer, shrouded in the tragic history of the house. To uncover the truth I delved into the annals of the town's history scouring old newspaper clippings and digging through dusty municipal records. The house, it seemed, held a melancholy tale that stretched back to over 50 years ago. A young couple full of life and dreams had once called this house their home. They had a child, a beautiful vibrant toddler who brought joy and laughter into the world. The nursery with its faded wallpaper and old wooden toys was the child's playground. This was the haven where the child's innocent laughter rang out filling the house with mirth and warmth. But as fate would have it, life had a cruel twist in store. A devastating illness swift and merciless took the child away, extinguishing the laughter that once echoed through these walls. The nursery became a silent monument to the child's memory. The laughter and cries that I'd been hearing were they the echoes of the child's spirit, trapped in a timeless loop, replaying the moments of joy and sorrow. The thought sent a shiver down my spine, the cold realization that I was not alone in the house. The story was heartbreaking, yes, but it provided some clarity. It offered a semblance of understanding to the inexplicable events that had been unfolding. It was unsettling to acknowledge the presence of a spirit, especially of a child who had lived and died in such tragic circumstances. But knowing the truth, I decided to confront the situation. Would fear overcome me, or would I find the courage to face these echoes of a time long past? The house, with its tragic history, had unveiled its secrets, and now it was up to me to respond. The time had come to face the echoes of the past. Can one ever truly be prepared to face the unknown? As the final night fell upon the house, the moon cast an eerie glow, painting the nursery in shades of uncertainty. The laughter and cries from the empty room had grown louder, more desperate, echoing through the hollow halls like a chilling symphony of the disturbed. It was in this moment that I found myself standing at the threshold of the nursery, my heart pounding against my ribs like a frantic drum. Armed with nothing but courage, I stepped into the room. The air was thick with the scent of age and disuse, a tangible reminder of the room's tragic past. The laughter and cries crescendoed, a cacophony of unseen sorrow that seemed to seep into my very bones. Unseen, yes, but not unheard, not ignored. Whoever you are, I began, my voice steady despite the tremors of fear that ran through me. I acknowledge you. I acknowledge your pain, your existence. I am here to listen, to understand. The room fell silent, so eerily quiet that the stillness was almost suffocating. The echoes of laughter and cries had ceased, replaced by a silence so profound, it was as if the room itself was holding its breath. I know your story, I continued, my voice barely above a whisper. I know the tragedy that befell you, and I am sorry. I am sorry that you were left here, alone and forgotten. In the foreboding silence, I felt a shift, a change. It was as if the room itself was responding to my words, the heavy air growing lighter, the oppressive shadows retreating. For the first time since I had arrived at the house, the nursery felt peaceful. But then, just as I was about to leave, convinced that my words had brought some semblance of peace to the unseen presence, I stopped. My heart skipped a beat, my breath hitching in my throat as I realized something. But then, from the shadows something moved. 
Hit the subscribe button if you don't want me to come alone. <laughs>